I also got a um a friend that told me that they um were writing a something and they wrote a part for me. And I said, Awesome. Well, what is it? And they said, It's this guy who chases these people into a cabin and murders them. <laughs> I said when they're like when I was writing the character, I was like, "This, you're uh, who I was thinking." Of. I was perfect. Like, you're exactly the kind of guy that yep. I think would do I that. Give off mass murdering sociopath uh. vibes. <laughs> hey, welcome back to Drug Addiction. Back Corbin, ah, Rick. You follow us on Instagram, Twitter for more juicy content. Thank you to everybody who supports on Patreon. Follow Switch with Twitter account. Yes. I've been hit the like button. Sorry. We are still like this. My entire family is sick. I now, I was sick. Now I have a sinus infection. But my wife, my three children are snotty, feverish, and sick still. And so uh, we are not having Rick come over because then that would make the process even longer because then he would be sick. <laughs> well, I told you not to French kiss my mom when she has the flu. It's your That's own fault. That's true. That's true. I didn't know. Um, anyways, uh, today we're doing a movie review and welcome to back to classic month, 2024. It's classic month. It's classic. Month. It's classic, month. Um, it's classic month. if you're new here, obviously every year, except for, I think year one, uh, I think we started the year two, right? Yeah. I don't think we, and, and, yeah, I think it's year two. We started classic month. Um, and it's just when we decide to uh, watch a whole bunch of classics in the month to get to know yep. what has influenced the current realm in Bollywood for this one and uh, and others, but we're not just doing Bollywood. We're doing all uh, as many regions as we can get to during Classic Month, but also know this is not the only month that we watch classics. We watch classics throughout the year. Right. It's just we just watched a classic. Would you consider Arth a classic? Because I, I do. would. I think it's a it would be a classic. Yeah, we just yeah. watched Arth last month. Uh, and also... If there's new films as well, we will be watching the new films that are out. Uh, so, and watch alongs yes. probably won't be classics; those will just be regular. But for for reviews, we're gonna do classics just to uh, for you people who don't know. But today we're doing a review of a highly anticipated uh, film um, and uh, one of the all time um, iconic, I think, films in Bollywood um, is uh, Shri Four Twenty Four Twenty Blaze It Baby. Uh, That's it. <laughs> we actually have it on our wall in case you didn't know it's uh do we where hold on oh i can't oh, see it no, over here it's right uh it, move shower Khan. it's right seriously there. it's right there oh it's the umbrella well there you go <laughs> um but yeah so obviously this came out in 1955 it'll be a hundred cent spoiler review um if you haven't watched it please go watch it come back um because uh it came out a long time ago so we're not going to do non-spoilers here but rick your initial classic thoughts of shri 420 well this film by the uh father of rishi and the grandpa of ranbir and the son of prithiraj um <laughs> Good Lord. I, 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 the first half I liked. The second half I freaking loved. Yeah, I got better as well. And oh, in every way. And not that the first half was bad. It just, it was fine. I was enjoying it. And it was, I'm sure it was Raj Kapoor's intent to build it that way from the beginning to the end, the way that he did. Very good dramaturgy as far as the building of the way that the, everything went, including cinematography and stuff that happens in the second half. Uh, this film, I understand why he's known as the Charlie Chaplin of India, not just because of a little tramp. Yeah. motif kind of thing but because yeah. of the messaging of his film and i've i've heard his other films have similar messaging yeah. uh and ultimately this is this is one of my favorite classics and we'll talk about nargis i i just oh. i i love i love the film i think it's fantastic yeah it was a um it's one i've wanted to get to for a long time we've seen i'm i think i don't know if we saw every song but we yeah saw, we i think saw. we saw every song yeah might have seen every song if not if there was like one that we didn't i might have forgotten yeah. um right but I didn't know much about it outside of those songs, outside of Nargis and Raj Kapoor uh, being right. in it and, and directing and producing. So it was a big project for him. Uh, mm -hmm. But he, I, I really, really enjoyed this movie. It, felt, it was such a classic feel. Um, and <laughs> the, the little, um, 
a tramp, like you said, motifs going on. Uh, it, and it wasn't like a recreation of anything that uh, Chaplin ever did in terms of like a film. He was just doing some classic kind of like um, schnicks almost at, at times. Yeah. It almost felt yeah. kind of like kind of weird. I'm like, oh, why, why'd you put that in there? Uh, maybe just because the audiences hadn't seen Chaplin and he was maybe bringing it to them or, or something like that. Um, because maybe. I was like, they only added these little kind of bits here and there of of the tramp um whether they sped him up or they did those little uh vaudevillian little uh comic scenes uh in 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 certain parts of it um and so it was just like i think like a little nod i think is what he really exactly i think it was what yeah he was. that's what uh, i saw it as too i saw it as a tip of the cap and i saw it in the same way for example if i were to see Derek huff do some choreography that was giving a tip of the cat to gene kelly or fred astaire Derek Huff is Derek Huff. He's one of my favorite dancers, and I wouldn't think he's trying to copy them. It would be he's giving an homage to it. And it, it, it I, I feel like Raj Kapoor, you know, because I'm, I am a big Chaplin fan. I know a lot about Chaplin, Chaplin. and I, I. I, th I just think they're very much cut from the same cloth. I bet they have a very similar DNA in terms of what they think cinema's for, what they wanted to do with cinema. And I think he just, it wouldn't surprise me if he deeply admired Chaplin and, oh. and wanted to make films like Chaplin, but he's not a, he's not a copy. I think it's just coincidental that his kind of little tramp character is it's, it's inspired by, it's kind of like any movies you see that in, it, you you could see the movie, um fighter or what, what's the one with the with the tom hardy the, the 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 brothers fighting warrior warrior right you could see those films and and you could see some of the inspiration that came from rocky but they're not copies by any stretch and i feel the same way about him yeah uh yeah. i agree uh so let's, before we get into everything else let's talk about the performances um because this is our i want to say second rush war film second i think so i was looking through the list i think oh, it's our second Lara? um yeah awara yeah was it awara that was the first one uh, i think that's correct because i was looking I really... through his filmography and i think that's the one for some i mistakenly thought he was in Pedosa, and he's not no 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 um and he has another one that uh Metanum joker which is a, a a very famous one of his um, yeah when i was looking at his filmography I, my, my thought was yeah we're we're probably never going to get to all of his films no same uh, with nargis yeah <laughs> Yeah, his performance. Uh, one, he has just just a great screen presence. Um, mm -hmm. he can, I mean, he one he, he looks like you know, Ren Beer a lot of times. And I'm like, oh, yeah. Like when he tilts his head a lot and he does like this, looks yeah, up from his eyes. I'm like, I, I see Ren Beer. Um, yeah, and, it's interesting. I see more of grandson than I do son actually. Sometimes, who, not that uh, I don't see Rishi. I see more of Rishi. No, no, no. I actually see a little more of Ren Beer. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. do of Rishi. I do too. I do too. Um, Maybe because uh, I think it's more because we know Rishi as older Rishi, ex and exactly I, times younger. Um, and so yeah, uh, and we've seen more Ran beer. So <laughs> yeah, but I thought he gave a really good performance. I thought he gave, he has great charisma, just like all the old Hollywood uh, stars back in the day. He's so uh, likable. Yeah, he has such great screen presence. Um, and uh, you could see why he, he was so beloved, but he's also a really good actor and a, a really good director. Um, but his acting right now, um, he he gave a classic performance, like old school Hollywood kind of vibe in terms of, you can't really compare it to, the, to today's performances because um, they were trying to do different things. It was almost, it felt like um, a Wonderful Life-esque with, uh, what's his yes. face? Uh, what's his face? Um, yeah, with uh, Jimmy Stewart. Oh, oh, oh Jimmy Stewart. Uh, it did feel a lot like that, and that's a high compliment. I oh agree. yeah, Jimmy, Jimmy Stewart's a, he's an all timer. Um, yeah, in a classic voice, but in the film, kind of almost felt like that a little bit as well. With the with the absolutely. Um, yeah, but yeah, he. Uh, I I really loved his performance. I loved uh, how nuanced it was. How I was because I was like, okay, is this going to be a classic? Um, he's going to kind of. He's going to kind of be a dick and like lose himself and all that kind of stuff. And then he's going to get the girl and you know, obviously that kind of happened, but there's a lot more that happened and like repercussions and, and messaging. That was a lot. I thought it was just going to be almost a romance film. Um, but they, I, I, I don't know if anyone would classify this as a romance film. 
um, even though there is romance, but there's just so much more in this film than than just what I thought there would be. Um, it reminded and- me. A, it reminded me a lot going back to Chaplin, as far as the romance and the messaging and the relationships, even with the ending. It was such a, a tip of the cap to say modern times by Charlie Chaplin and his relationship with the the main lead character and that final shot with the two of them, you know, standing there. I just and I loved I loved the line. Um, uh, there were several of them, but there were some very clear messages in the scripting where one of the lines was uh, men descended from the apes, but money has turned them into dogs. Mm. It's a great line. Yeah, it's a great line. Uh, before yeah. we get into all that, uh, let's talk about Nargis, who I think is one of the, the most best director and uh, actors, uh, actresses in all of India ever. Um, it wouldn't shock me if Taboo looked up to her, I think. Um, I agree. She gives off yeah, the I think you don't... vibe uh, as Taboo. Um, yeah. In terms of like, whoa, she's just brilliant every single time she's on screen. She's regal. She's captivating. Um, and she gives such a great performance in this, uh, a standout emotional performance in this. Yep. I, she's, I was as equally impressed with her as I was in mother India. Oh. I, I, I see why she was beloved. She is an exceptionally good actress. Her emotional availability seems so genuine. I believe every emotion she's expressing. Um, she has such a, I, I, there were several times I was watching her and I had the exact same thought. And my thought was, wow, you probably don't have Taboo without Nargis. I bet this was somebody that Taboo really looked up to. And uh, in, in the same way, so many actresses looked up to, say, uh, a Maureen O'Hara or a, or a, uh, a Catherine Hepburn. Um, yeah. You know, like, I'm sorry, Meryl, Meryl looked up to them. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. so good. Um, she was, and I thought all, all the supporting actors, they, even though like some of them were like stereotypical, like, like old school Hollywood, they stereotypical villain, yes. stereotypical, like evil girl, which I loved. I love that. I love I the, did. Oh, I loved the temptress. I, she was great. I loved her a lot. She was great. Um, <laughs> and, uh, stere- but it wasn't stereotypical in 1955 though. That's the thing. No. And I, she, she, a couple of her dance numbers. I thought you've got better hips than Shakira, man. She is yeah. just a beautiful lady. Really well cast um and so the 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 great thing about this movie there's many great things it's the score obviously when we we reacted to most of the songs was just so good but the the messaging of it uh, i I do love a good fuck capitalism story obviously um and how like basically you could take the the one it starts with him selling his honesty obviously right in the beginning it's very like here's the messaging (laughs) he's selling his honesty that's um right in the beginning but then uh how it eats you up and won't won't let you leave and like corrupts you and everything around you and destroys you with the greed and the um and now everybody yes like even if they have this like um your bet that you think they have like your best interest at heart over they're not doing they're they're just doing it for profit it's all for the to make the make the next dollar it's really like a fuck capitalism uh type story um and i it was for 1955 in india man it was uh they do that a lot though we've seen it a lot where they they do these we have and obviously i, I know they're, they're more of a um uh, communist right they, they're like they're the way they they're not capitalist or they weren't back in the day right um in india india yeah like what am i thinking mm-hmm. not capitalism the what was the other term socialism yeah yeah maybe communism yeah, yeah, not communism i think it's communism let me know uh but obviously they come from more of that background um and so it, it was interesting uh seeing this but it was i thought the messaging was so good by raj kapoor and to not make it all it, there was some in the face stuff but i'm um, for 1955 i you can't really tell if it's this is like stereotypical in your face or if this is just like they this was like revolutionary at the time because of how they did it um, but I, 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 I love I, the messaging of it. Yeah, I think it was an, an absolutely the unspoken villain, I think, here. I mean, I could be corrected, but I think the unspoken villain in this that he's giving the major middle finger to is the British. Because yep. this is 1955, and there is a lot of the 
corruption and desire for money and wealth at the expense of truth that I believe he's saying, we were taught this. This is not who we are as Indians. Yeah. This is what the British brought over here among the many things that they did to ruin our place because the reason they came here was for profit. What they did to us was for profit. And what many of us felt we had to do in order to survive and thrive with them ruling was to be dishonest in order to profit. And now that they're gone, which is why I think the song is such an important song clearly for not just the film, but in cinema history in India, the, the, the whole song about my hats from Russia, my, my, you know, they, my things from Japan, but my heart is, is Hindustani. Hindustani yeah. And I, yeah. And, and, it, and it's, it's the, it's the same motivation. It's the capitalistic hunger to, to just have more and more at the expense of truth and rightness. And I, I just, I loved, I loved the use of the progression of the cinematography and the visual effects in the second half. He got so Chaplin esque. And so even Orson Wellian in his, there's this one shot, you'll know it immediately, where he's holding the money out. Yeah. And the POV is from him. Yeah, and yeah. Nargis is in the middle. And she's that representation of the, a true Indian of goodness and rightness. And she's repulsed by him. And he's trying to justify everything he's doing. And, and his the montage that had that went over his face of all of the things that this, the lying and the profitability could bring him. I just thought, damn. His the Chaplin comparison isn't just the little tramp thing. This man is a, is a movie maker. Yeah. Another thing that I I really was impressed by was some of the VFX that they were able to do. Like I think it was right after that scene when he was drunk and he was being an ass and he was coming in and trying to justify everything that he had done with money. Um, and then when he was leaving and she started singing the song and her basically her stance was right there because she was like, I'm not moving, but her heart or her soul came out basically. And I thought that was really cool, really cool visual that too. in 1955 in India, I was like, oh, that seems really impressive to me. Um, and one, just a great visual representation because obviously her soul was singing beautifully and, and longing for him to like, I, I love you, turn around, please just look at me before you go. And But her outer is like this asshole. Like she's just standing there. She's like, I'm yeah. not moving. I am not like so it's like her her heart and her mind was telling her two obviously very different things. I thought that was a cool and there was a couple other visual things that happened in the movie that I thought were were really, really cool. Yeah, it's again such a beautiful transition and so unexpected from the first half of the film where you get into it and you realize, oh, you've been holding your cards close to the vest here, you filmmaker. I didn't see any of this coming in the first half. Yeah. Uh, what I'm really interested to know what you thought of the ending. Um, where she came back. No, not the very ending ending. I mean, the climax, the very, very climax oh, res part it, it where felt very he yeah, it felt very uh, wonderful life. It is what it felt like. Did you did you want him to be dead? <laughs> I kind of knew he wasn't. I yes, was... but th that's not the question. Yeah. I always prefer people because <laughs> I dead. know you. Yeah. My yeah, first no, thought when he jumped up was, I thought, oh, Corbin's not gonna like that. <laughs> if, it, if it was happening like today, it would bother me more. Sure, sure. 1955. Sure. One, I was expecting it. I was like, he's right. Not He's, he's not dead. dead. He's yeah. not dead. He planned that whatever because I was like, he's planning something. So this entire thing is yeah. is is a plan. Yeah, um, right. And so I was just kind of expecting it. Um, and so when it happened, I was like, Yeah, there you go. And then the whole ending of crowd coming together, helping helping yes. him out. And like uh um, if you haven't seen a wonderful life, it's one of the great Christmas movies and great movies of old Hollywood ever. Of all time, yeah. Um great but, film. Um, but it, it had that feeling of communal uh support and um touch on so many different issues i also loved um his um uh, like the lady that gave him food right in the beginning and she kind of was almost yes. like a mom figure very much yeah yeah I, like I thought that. it was so well written too they brought everything back full circle you know you there's stuff that's happening at the beginning you're thinking to yourself is this just filler for a three-hour film and it's not everything comes back later on that happened in the beginning everything from the toe being revealed in his shoe to the the pathway versus sidewalk and the people and the it just it, it's a really i wouldn't cut anything from this film i love it 
in its runtime. And I, I, I think it is one of the best classics we've ever seen. Yeah. So that, that shot of them walking down the street with the umbrella is, I have already, I've already seen that I think in many songs and then just in the, the lore. And I didn't read the, um, the Bollywood book. Did you, I'm sure there's a whole. I bet there is a section. I haven't read that thing cover to cover. I'm sure it's in there. And I also wonder if there's anything out there in the internet world of, of, I hope Charlie Chaplin got to see this thing because I think it would have really made him happy. Chaplin didn't die until 1978, 77. Maybe. But world cinema was a lot smaller in terms of accessibility to things. It was, but him being a, a, a film lover and spending so much of his life, especially the latter part of his life, because America was an asshole to him yeah. um, in England and with, with the rise of Satyajit Rai and, and Indian cinema, I would, it wouldn't surprise me. And I would really hope and love to know not only if he saw it, what he thought, because I can't imagine Chaplin wouldn't have loved this movie. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. no doubt. Um yeah, it's really nice. Uh, good start to classic month. Our classic months are usually really, really. Yeah, um, we really are. We rarely have ever seen a classic that wasn't worthy of yeah. us being told, you got to watch this. It's one of the greatest of all time. It's good uh, recommendations by Stupid Babies. Um, so the best. Let us know uh, what should be our next um, classic review uh, that we should do for Hindi or for others as well. Malayalam, Canada, Telugu, Tamil. Bengali, obviously, Um, and uh, what those should be down below.